in the name of the greatest people that have ever trod this earth, I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny, and I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. <laughs> I personally feel that we have maxed out our ability to educate these children in a situation we in, how we currently doing. I think you're doing the best you can do. They come in, they're behind. A lot of it is not their fault. They were born poor. They were born minorities. They were born in a situation where we were lumped on one side of town. They come to you as freshmen, they're behind. We, okay, we understand all that. And I think the way we're doing now, we have maxed out what we can do. So, we have to be innovative. The purpose of this is to try to solve all of those problems and really make education relevant. Make it practical. Make education make sense. If we did school eight to three, like we always did it, we would still be in the same spot. You just can't do school like everyone else does school. It takes me giving up my day, my evening. It takes my wife saying, do what you have to do and be understanding. It takes a faculty saying, we'll come in out school free. Don't worry about paying us. We all donate two hours. We'll come in on Saturday. It takes that kind of people. It's a system that's just getting in place, but I feel like we're 10 years behind. So we, we're, we're working faster to play catch up. We had been under court order in the school system for a ex long extended period of time, and deseg was where we should be. We, would, we were desegregated, and we had achieved that. And so working together, we were able to apply and continue to strive to achieve those things which were absolutely necessary in order for the federal government justice department to say yes well done you are where you need to be as far as providing equity to all students in the tuscaloosa city schools how you doing brother Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, brother? Good morning. Good morning. Come on, sister. Come on, come on, sister. How you doing? Good morning. 
When I went to Central High School, I felt special. The whole state thought we were special. You had National Merit Scholars. You had four or five foreign languages being taught. You had the best teams. You had a math national championship. But to break that up, that's something I think I would never really understand. Ms. Alexander, Mr. Williams. Yes. Could you see who's the uh, substitute for Mr. Kowski class for me? I'm in okay. here now, but no sub. Okay, because there was someone on the list. My position was, we've rushed into this. We need more time, we need more research. But for the majority of the people on the school board who represented the majority of the, uh, the voters, it was okay. And I said to them, we will experience the damage of this decision for the next 50 years. I said, it's criminal what we've done tonight. Central is a high poverty, high minority school. And right now, our data is reflecting that situation. Several years ago, we were rated as one of the worst schools in Alabama. We had the lowest graduation rate in the state. We have some issues in Tuscaloosa that we don't discuss. But if we keep working, we're going to shock the world. I really think the senior class has a chance to make a 12% growth from last year. And that's, that's going to be big. Now, the main thing they want to see are kids talking, writing, investigating, reading, and listening. They don't hear our philosophy of education. We, we know what we're dealing with. I'm asking you, okay? I'm not telling you to do something, but tap dance for them those two days, please. Please. <laughs> tap dance. Do whatever you have to do. We do it every day. I understand, but just put on your hat and your shoes and your gloves and give them what they want. So I'm gonna show many people this. I'm gonna show you what, what life can get you when you learn to control your temper and treat people right. You ready? You ready? I don't show people this now. They proud. I'm doing this because I'm trying to save you, son. You saw that figure? Mm -hmm. You know how many chicks that get the one figure? Mm -hmm. Hard work. Treat people right. There ain't no garbage chain there. Hmm? That's pretty nice, ain't it? That's, that's all I'm trying to teach. Group one is circling unfamiliar words. Group two, which will be right here, underlining important information. That means you're highlighting. Group three, after you read it, if you have a question, pull that out. What we're going to do is we're going to summarize just this little chunk of text. OK? So everyone does that to the side. Um, I'm going to give you about three minutes. OK, let's get started. Right now, reading and comprehension is our number one battle, and we made it our number one priority. Attendance, behavior, college, all goes back to reading and comprehension. And the quest we have, and I think everyone in America has a challenge, how do we address that pattern, especially this late in the game? Security, please sweep the hallway for those kids and push them on. <laughs> Do not get caught slipping. You are expected to work and produce. If you had a tree in your yard that does not produce, you tear down the tree because it's taking up space. 
I will not have students here who are not producing and taking up space. We're not. And if you feel like you're not getting what you need to produce, that's when you need to come see me. My first year here was 2010, 2011. The first thing I saw was low expectations uh, from everyone, from the students. They didn't expect much out of themselves. On up, it was a big problem that we had to unravel and try to address. Behavior was awful. Oh, respect was terrible. They didn't like each other. We had arguments, fights in the neighborhood. Teachers really couldn't teach. They, they were more surviving because of the culture they were placed in. They were not teaching physics at Central High School, but they were teaching physics at Northridge and, of course, at Bryant. It offended me that the system did not feel that those children deserved a class like physics. Your character dictates who you are. So how can life experiences shape your character as a person? So what are some of those things that you went through that you experienced in life that have shaped you to be who you are today? Like, in my family, it's a lot of failure. And so that's why I try to act right in school and keep my grades up so I won't be a failure like my family. Yeah, that's all right. Friday afternoon, I did meet with 12 members from the Alabama State Department of Education and received our state audit report. They came two days. They interviewed me, parents, students, and teachers. They observed 28 classrooms. I do want to start off by giving you a standing ovation. I am thoroughly proud of the report. They said we had the best state audit in the last three years. So I'm gonna let them, let them begin and just kind of give you kind of an overview, some information about what it's like in college. Come with an understanding that you want to better yourself so that you can, when you talk to them, you won't sound like, you know, sound like you below them. Because some people make you think that you are below them. So you have to come ready and prepared. In my school, since there are so few um, African-American students, some of them there try to act more black than they are, and the other ones try not to act like they're black at all. Mm -hmm. I would say just be yourself. You know, you got the, the ones that's extra, so they're like, just, you know, just try to act louder and crazier all the time because that's how they think some of the kids see them. You know, a lot of ones that I met, Caucasian students, have never really been around black kids. They would ask me, about stereotypes and were they true or were they false. And I couldn't fault them, this is just where they grew up. And I guess the worst part about that is when they ask you like, are all black people ghetto or all of them loud or stuff like that, you gotta an answer with, you know, a mature answer. Don't get mad because they're asking you because you're black, you know. They just know that you're black and they've heard this so now they're asking you. So I guess you would say if it's bad, don't prove them right. This part of your life back here helps prepare you for the other part of your life. And if there are gaps, then you're going to, you're going to fill it. The need for that experience is human. You know, we need to interact with people who are different. That's one of the survival skills that we all have to have. desegregated uh, school system. Uh, there are all kinds of evidence that, uh, and, and that every day, I think the board uh, endeavors yet today to maintain that and to ensure that. Those who had doubts that this would, that desegregation uh, and the green factors would be maintained of desegregation I think now they realize, in fact, yes, we do. We see it in action. It is taking place. Tuscaloosa school leaders also say tonight that they're frustrated about some of the schools on the failing list. So we do well. We're doing well this year. Like I said, we had a great state audit. I'm excited. Uh, I'm on upswing. I, we got new plans for next year, and 
about a week ago, <laughs> uh, the failing school list part two come out, second year come out. And again, the headline says schools are improving, yet Central High School is still on the failing school list. And that was just like somebody just took a boot, a steel toe boot, and just socked me in the mouth with it. Very disappointing. I understand why we're on the list, but if people can see what we're doing and see the success, it's kind of hurtful to call these kids the failures, um, failures when it goes back six years. So we'll continue to work. Yeah, but that, that hurt me. Hurt everybody, the faculty and the students.